Hey guys, we're going to go over a new prompting strategy that I've been putting together where I use medium to very long lengths of prompts in order to more tightly control the images that we're getting out of the 4.0 image generator. And we're going to start with a few principles. So let's go into those principles. Okay, so here we are with these principles. So there's a whole lot that goes into it, but ultimately it boils down to what do you want to get the most processing power and what do you want to set the tone? So in number one, it would be having the style and the main figure first, which sets the tone of the image and it sets up the visual hierarchy of the design. And this part should have a lot of processing power associated with it because the main figure and the style are both extremely important when it comes to having a good, well put together design. And the second layer, the secondary layer is anything that is important in terms of supporting the main object. And often we will say, we're going to place this object next to the main character in the image. So for instance, it might be a raccoon selfie and we're gonna go over a raccoon selfie in this um, for the medium length prompt. And in the secondary layer, we're going to have what's essentially a mid ground. It will be maybe the setting that is associated with the main the character in the design. And the last one will be background elements and layout instructions. And it's the last layer of the instruction because it gets the least weighting. And we can put a lot of text here, but we need to make sure that it's easy for the 4.0 image generator to follow what we're asking for. So this is where we can do some pretty cool things with layout that don't require as much image processing power. Okay, so here we are with the first image that we're gonna go over. This is a selfie image of a couple of raccoons in a beach setting, right? And this would be typically considered a pretty long prompt, and it does a good job of getting this image, but I took this and I ran it in ChatGPT three times with that exact same prompt, and I got some pretty varied results. So the way that selfies work is the arms are in a certain way, right? In this one, we've got an arm that's off screen and we have this raccoon in the uh, mid ground or background, I guess. And if you look at what happens when we just run it without changing the prompt at all, we get varied poses and we get a very different feel as far as the second raccoon goes, how far back it is, um, what the overall setting looks like. And of course, it's all on uh, a t-shirt instead of being isolated on a black background or whatever it is. So what I did here was I made a medium weight prompt and it's going to be very much longer than what you would normally expect. This is twice as long as the original prompt, if not a little bit more. And after doing this medium weight prompt, if we look at the images, we are getting much more consistent images. Uh, this one's in portrait mode and these two are in the square mode. And if you look at the arms of the raccoons and the way that this uh, secondary raccoon in the mid ground looks, it looks a whole lot more similar. We've taken control of our outputs by prompting in the correct fashion. And you even see that the uh, bokeh effects, like the slight blurring all the way in the background, uh, makes it feel like even more of a selfie. So let's break down what we did here with our medium weight prompt. Okay, so what we did here was we made sure that we separated this out nice and cleanly to show what our style and main figure are, right? We set up the style by saying photorealistic, and then we go into describing everything that is in the foreground. It's the main character 
raccoon that's lounging in a pool and it's taking the selfie. It's got a mischievous grin. So we're describing in detail exactly what we want to happen with the main part of the image that needs the very most processing power to be executed well for the overall design. And we even give it a little bit of the layout part. And then in the secondary layer, we set the mid ground where we have that second raccoon and we give a bunch of details around that and the rippling reflections, which are very close to the raccoons. It's not in the background, it's in the mid ground, it's nearby. Um, in a different type of design, it might be symbolic elements. And then here's what we're gonna do with the background and layout. And this is the background, the part that's slightly blurred out as if it's a realistic selfie. And we give it lens effects, we tell it about depth of field, and then we talk about the fact that we want it to be rendered a specific way and what we want it to emphasize. So I'm gonna take out the labels so you can see what the length really looks like and we can compare it to the original prompt. So here's our original prompt. We've got probably two and a half times as much text but we got a design that is exactly what we're looking for. And ultimately with AI, we're not going to get the same thing every time, but what we can do is up the probability of getting what we want out of the image generator. So we're gonna go through another example of what a traditional prompt looks like with this ideogram style prompt over here. And this one is a tarot card design. And what we're gonna do is we're going to shift this prompt completely to get a much more tight image. It's going to be a tarot card, but it's not gonna look anything like this traditional tarot card here. And the reason we want that is because this would be kind of difficult to process on the back end. It's got glow effects, there's lots of texturing, there's a bunch of random dots. They're all in different colors. It's gonna be pretty hard to cleanly remove the background. And this is just a very busy design. You don't know exactly what's going on. So we're going to take this all the way to something that looks like this. And we can break down the prompt right now. Okay, so as we could see here, this is a much different type of design. It's a tarot card. It's very obvious that it's a tarot card, but it's better for apparel because you know exactly what it is. It's about a reader, right? And we've got these very neatly arranged symbols. It's going to be much easier to process on the back end. All we have to do is throw it into Vectorizer AI and punch out the background color. And we do a lot of the heavy lifting by making this prompt very long. So, Again, we do the style and main figure bit here, and I'm not going to read out four or 500 words, so you don't need to worry about that. But basically, we set up, this is the style, this is the main subject, and then we describe the main subject, and then we do something that the 4.0 model can do, and we negate the possibility of symbols or icons appearing on her clothing. And this keeps the 4.0 generator from spending a bunch of its resources on crap that makes the design worse. And, uh, and we continue down and we continue to describe the main figure and we start to start to get into some of the stuff that she's holding and the stuff that she's wearing, but ultimately it's mostly about the main figure and the action and what she's wearing and that kind of thing. And then we go into the secondary elements and then we do the symbolic icons that we saw earlier with the crescent moon and such. And then after that, we have a very large background and layout section. And this does things like set up the background, obviously, and it creates the tarot card border. It does simple filigree. It labels it the way you would with a tarot card. And we ask for negative space to be filled with a solid dark gray, which makes it much easier to process on the back end. And then we also give it instructions to use bold outlines, solid fills, and minimal interior lines with no gradients or shading. So again, let's 
punch out these little headers, and then you can see just how long the stinking prompt is, right? And we will compare it to a traditional tarot card prompt, which would be considered moderately long, at least in the past. So here we are, we've probably got five times as many words here with this heavy prompt. But look at the difference in the outputs here. This is wildly more controlled and you're much more likely to get something that you want back. Okay, so I hope that you found this helpful. It really is something that I've been leaning into. Medium and heavyweight prompts get you way better results on average in the 4.0 model. This does not really work in any other AI image generator. You can give it a shot, but I was disappointed every time I tried to use something other than ChatGPT. Now, if you want to see how I handle things after I have the image, then you can check out this video over here. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.